Hey friends, most people are confused about how to actually use OpenAI's new image API, especially inside automation tools like NA10. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to build an AI agent that can automatically create, edit, and generate image variations for you using OpenAI's new API inside NA10. You'll be able to download a free starter version of the workflow to help you get up and running faster. Let's see in action now. Okay, so I've created this very simple prompt, create a film noir movie character, woman from the 50s looking like a Wagner in a black dress. And let's uh, do it. Okay, so immediately it improves the prompt, a glamorous 50s film noir woman reminiscent of Aga Wagner standing in a dimly lit smoky jazz club. Okay, would you like me to generate the image now? Yes, let's go. As you can see, it calls a create image tool and we have to wait a bit to get our image. Okay, here is it. We have a link to see our image and look at it. This is really beautiful, but I'm going to tell it that I want it in black and white. So I say to it, can you please edit this image to make it black and white? Let's go. Okay. It works, you see, it's using the edit image tool now. We wait a bit. We have it. So let's click the link. And as you can see, he has made almost the same image, black and white. Now let's ask it to create variation. Can you please create two variations of this image? And now you see, it uses the create variation tool. Here is it. So variation one. Okay, as you can see, it's a bit of a disaster and I'm going to explain why. And variation two is, yes, creepy. Why? We are going to see it now because I'm going to explain how this API works and why the variation is not usable for the moment. Here's exactly what we'll cover today. First, we'll look at how the OpenAI Image API actually works. Second, we'll create your AI agent flow inside NA10. Third, we'll add tools to create image edit existing one and generate new variations. And finally, we'll save all your generated image automatically into Google Drive. And don't worry, if you're new to NA10, APAs or agent, this build is fully beginner friendly. And I walk you through everything step-by-step step with no coding required. So let's explore the API. So first we go to settings in general, and we need to have our organization verified. Don't worry, that takes about two minutes. Then we go to API reference and images, and we see that we have three different possibilities. Create image, create image edit, and create image variation. So for create image, we have this endpoint URL, and we have all of these parameters, prompt, background, model, moderation, number of image, output compression, output format, quality, response format, size, style, and user. We will use some of these parameters. Then, and this model can use GPT image one, which is the one that we are going to use, DALI two and DALI three. Then for create image edit, this is the endpoint and this can support GPT image one and DALI two. We will use GPT image one, of course. And then here we have parameters. So here we have image. We need the image that we are going to edit the prompt and then these other parameters that you can explore in detail. And for create image variation, this is the endpoint and it only supports DALI 2. And this is why the image that we are generated were a disaster. So you can see how much image generation has improved since it appears with DALI. But this can be available, I hope, soon with GPT image one. And so we will be able to create a nice variation. Okay, so now let's dive into the workflow. So here we have our agent workflow. So we begin with a chat trigger and then we have a node agent. And inside this node agent, we have a prompt with many instructions because we are going to ask it to improve the initial prompt. And so this is the type of things that we will dive in more deeper in my community with an expert in image generation. Okay, so then we connect our LLM. 
So we am using here GPT for one nano with a temperature of zero two because we want it to be precise. And we had a memory buffer and here we have our tools, create image tool, edit image tool and create variation tool. So how does this work? This is calling a tool that we have created in another workflow. So here from the list, I get the create image tool and this tool has this input, the prompt, the number of image and the model, the size, the quality, the file name, the file name that is going to be saved in Google Drive and the background because we can ask to have a transparent background for a logo, for example. Okay, so here we have the edit image tool and for this tool, we have a prompt, the number of image, the model, the size, the quality, the file name again to save to the, to the Google Drive and the image URL, which is the one that we have generated first with create image. And for the create variation tools, even if you are not going to use it because the results are not good so far, we have just the image URL and the number of image. By the way, if you want to go even deeper, like building a full front end for your agent to scale it like a SaaS product and joining weekly live builds and Q and A's, you can join the early access waitlist for my private AI builder community in the link below. Okay. Here we are inside the create image tool and the trigger is when executed by another workflow. So if we open the trigger, this is where we can enter all the inputs that we have seen inside the tool in the agent. And here we can see that the agent has passed the data to the tool. So the prompt, the number of image one, the model GPT image one, the size, the quality auto, and the file name to save it into Google Drive and background auto because we have not asked anything special. Then we make an HTTP request here and we use the post method with the URL generation that we have seen inside the API reference. And we have a predefined credential because we already have our credential to OpenAI and we can use it here. Then inside the body, we use this field. So the model here, we pass the model from here, the prompt number, the size, the quality. And so we pass everything from the schema here. In case we ask for several image, we have used here a split out field. Here is not the case, but it's a possibility. So we use it. Okay. And here we have an input, which is an image. It's a B64 JSON and we need to convert it to a file. So to move B64 to string to file, the base 64 is this one. And we want the output file in field to be named data and the output. It's a binary file named data. Now we need to upload this file to Google drive. So here we have our Google drive connection. And I have created a folder N810 open AI images, which it's here. And we choose upload as operation and the input data field name, it's data. So the field from here and the name here, we pass the file name that we get from the create image tool here. Okay. And this is the output. Then we need from all these, the image link that the agent will display in the chat. So we can link and see our image inside Google drive. And this is the web view link, which is here in the schema web view link. So I have taken that here. Okay. And then we use aggregate in case that we have several images and this is the output and the tool sends this back to the agent. So we can see that in our chat. Let's see the edit image tool. So again, we have this uh, trigger and inside we have all the parameters. So the prompt, the number of image, the model, the size, the quality, 
the file name and the image URL. And after that, we have a Google Drive download file because we need to download the image that we have created in the, in, with the other tool. And this is the image URL. So I'm going to have the data from the execution. Okay. It will be better. So, okay, here we can see the image URL, which is passed here. So it downloads this image and we have a binary file with a data field. And then we are going to use it in our HTTP request. And here we use the edits endpoint. Okay. And in the body, we use the form data content type instead of the JSON because we are going to need one parameter, which is an 10 binary file for the image. And here we put the data from the previous execution. And then another parameter here we use form data. So this content time for data, it's when we need to pass a binary file, we have the possibility. And for the other parameters, we use form data. So here for the model for the prompt and for the number we use form data. Then we again split out in case there is several images, then we convert again to file the generated image exactly like in create image and we upload it to Google Drive. Same thing and same thing here with the image link and aggregate again, like in the other workflow. So it's very similar, except we have to download the file for Google Drive and we use a different API. And remember about the form data content type for the body. Okay, now let's see the create variations tool, even if we are not going to use it for the moment, but I hope that one day it will use the good model and that we can make variation. I'm sure that that will be very, very soon. So here again, we use this trigger and we have only these two parameters, the image URL from the previous execution and the number of image. I don't know if you know this, this trick. When you go to execution, you have this button copy to editor that copies the data and it's very, very handy to see what happens or to debug. Okay, so here again, we download the file like in edit workflow and we made an HTTP request to this endpoint, the variations endpoint. And here again, we need the form data content type because we have again a binary file with this here and form data for the N parameter. All right, we've seen how to structure the workflow improve your prompts and save everything automatically to Google Drive. If you want to go deeper and have access to exclusive templates, make sure you join the early access waitlist for my private AI builder community. The link is below and early members get the best possible price when we launch. And if you need help building AI tools for your business, I offer free strategy calls. You'll find the link below where you can book a time with me. Lastly, if this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and drop a comment if you have questions or ideas for future videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.